Theo Lin Chia, Tây Tị, Anh Lao Sa. Hi everybody, Russ from the Western Network. Hope you're all safe and well. Cold Monday in Orn Church. Cold Monday in Orn Church. If you're new around here, where the hell have you been? But welcome. Thanks for joining us. Please consider subscribing. Hitting the bell notification. Like, comment, share, all that bloody good stuff. Give it a good su- 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 subscribe. Um Yeah. It's it's Monday. It's Monday the fifth of December. It's uh oh, the countdown to the bun holiday is on, is on. It's on less than 10 days before I'm leaving on a jet plane. Don't know where I'll be back again. The 3rd of January. Hope you're enjoying the um, the advent calendar we're doing every day. Uh, a player every day today was the 5th. Uh, remember, remember the 5th of December. And it was Igor Stimach. And just a little uh, glimpse of the Igor interview. Keep an eye on the channel. We should have some really cracking interviews coming up very, very, very soon with one of our one of our new friends. Um, so we'll keep an eye out for that over the next couple of weeks. Well done to England. Well, wasn't it good? Wasn't it good? Sort of like pretty pretty West Ham esque in the first thirty five minutes, but then they scored them like West Ham did. Um, and uh, yeah, through to the quarters with uh, with La France Le Bleu on Saturday. Which is great because Joe and Flo are out to a, on a pantomime, and that starts at six thirty. Got it sorted, button. Got it sorted. Feet up. Pizza ordered. Anyway, as we do on a Monday, we'd like to give you. There's lots of news that have been happening over the last few days, and the idea being is we sort of give you just a few, just a flavour of what's been talking about, what people have been saying. Um, and and there's been interesting loads of stuff actually over the, over the weekend. To be fair, um, so it's a bit bit of a sort of a, what's the word? bit of a sort of a heads up um that type of thing so we're going to start we'll start with the first story which involves um a play you may well have heard of called declan rice um now according to let me just uh, let's just put the screen up there we go let's get it already now according to um let's have a look where is it where is it where is it let me get me get my paper hop off. it literally is hot off the press um so west ham are oh, this morning being reported to be ready to offer Declan Rice a bumper deal, a quarter of a million pound a week deal to remain at the London Stadium. It comes from our friends at Six Foot Two, um, who say that it falls into line with the general view that the club will go as far as it can to keep Declan Rice, but that money isn't likely to make any sort of motivation for Declan. I mean, he's turned down deals with us of in excess of of £200,000 a week, really. Um, obviously, he had the interview last week, which Irish Tommy spoke about on the Late Late Show. Check that out. With, uh, with Lee from American Hammers was on there, I believe. Um, and it was clear that his motivation is nothing to do. It's not money. It's ambition. So this is a bit of a... I mean, it, to me, this is a little bit of a PR stunt, I'll be honest, if it, if it happens. Um, I mean, the club has offered him, as I said... I mean, his dad is his agent, Sean... Uh, he offered him, I think it was, I think it was last year, the two hundred grand a week deal. But that's been a couple of times. Apparently, it's been on the on the table, and that was immediately not back. Um, and the two hundred fifty k a week deal seems to suffer this. I reckon it's going to be the same fate, and it'll probably be the last one the board will offer. Really, um, so it's almost like we've tried, you know. So literally, that's the most they can do is two is two hundred fifty grand a week. So, you know, and that, to be honest, that's what he'll probably get if he goes to a Man City anyway. Really. But with the guarantee of being, you know, winning trophies potentially, or being in the hunt for trophies, which you can't guarantee you'll win. But um, yeah, but still, it's you know the offers, the offers be made, the offers be made. Um, speaking of the the run, like the board and things like that, um, according to XWHU employee, our friend, good old friend, good old X, um, apparently West Ham chairman Gold, David Gold could be selling some of his shares in in the club with Danny Kudrinsky apparently interested in buying them. Gold, we know, has been the joint chairman of West Ham since 2010 um, when he bought 50% of the club shares along with business partner David Sullivan. Um, they, in the pair, later extended their share um, to 30% each. Um, however, um, after 12 years in charge of the club, 
X reckons that Gold could be looking to sell some of his shares with Kudrinsky reportedly keen to invest further into the Hammers. Uh, he bought a 27% stake in the club in 21, 2021, and the Guardian reported there was an option in place for him to acquire Gold and Sullivan's shares for a set price should he wish to complete a full takeover. Now, in... That was nothing new because actually in the same way that price was set if Gold or Sullivan wanted to buy Krajinski's share. So it was no like, oh, okay, this is all set up for later on. It was a set price between the three of them, mutually agreed price. So it could be that, you know, that, that, that Danny takes, we know he's not keen particularly to take the club over full in terms of full ownership, but maybe he would look to maybe increase his stake potentially. Um, he's he's keen to do that, um, you know. And obviously, the appointment of Mark Noble as sporting director, um, you know, having a team of directors above the manager, you know, maybe relieve some of the pressures off Moisey in terms of the contracts and transfers and stuff like that. Um, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. I think twenty twenty three is going to be an interesting year for West Ham uh, in terms of you know, the, the upper levels, potentially. Um, and maybe this could be it. Maybe it would be a case of David Gold reducing his, his shares um, and, and Danny taking taking more on. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, that's what X has said. So we'll listen. So we'll just report it and uh, and you can make your own conclusions. Now, there's, yeah, there's obviously some, you know, obviously the Premier League doesn't get back until October, until um, Boxing Day. Um, but the under-18s are still bloody winning. They're still bloody winning. They battled the 3-1 down against Spurs yesterday to win 4-3. The Hammers pulled off an incredible comeback to continue what has been a superb start to the season. They've won all 10 of their games this season so far and are well clear at the top of the under-18s Premier League South. Um, they looked as though they were going to be consigned to a defeat yesterday when it went 3-1 down with 51 minutes left. Oli Scars made it 3-2 on 64 minutes and um, Divine... Divine's brace then sealed a sensational comeback to keep the perfect league record intact. In fact, on Friday we were I was I was privileged enough to go to the 1993 promotion um, player season player um, night, um, which was hosted by uh, Mandeville Promotions up in London, and. We there was there was one section of the, of the show which we had. I mean, Tony Gale was being the compare. And he had Kenny Brown, he had Kevin Keane, he had Mark Robson, uh, he had Potsy, and he had Mad Dog randomly at the end. And they were asking him about the youth, and there were obviously we had lots of questions about the academy and the youth and stuff like that. And and obviously Kevin Keane runs the 18s and says there's a number of very, very good players who could make it to the next level. Um, Rob, Mark Robson said, oh yeah, but the trouble is I, I felt really bad because I nicked most of your players for the under-23s under this season. But regardless of that, 10 wins in 10 wins. But, um, you know, part of the reason why probably since probably since the, the, the closing of the Premier League for the World Cup, they've gone on the even more leaps and bounds is because a lot of the 23s who were actually part of the 18s have dropped back into the 18s because there's no 23 games on so yeah and anyway it was it was it was fascinating and and we might try and i did take some some footage we might try and put a little montage together of of some of the interviews um because some of them were really fascinating particularly potsy as well who we don't hear from um a lot usually but i'll keep 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 your nose to the ground because we may get potsy on the channel eventually 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 um obviously the under 18s won another side that we have which has been riding high as the west ham women so uh, unfortunately they, they lost yesterday which was a bit of a bit of a shock defeat in all honesty uh, in terms of how well they've been playing um this season uh, they went down 2-0 away to liverpool um which was again as i said a little bit of a shock um First half goals from uh, Kerry Holland and Katie Stengel secured the win for the um, for the Reds. Um, Paul and Jesse's side, you know, stuck with the same side that beat Bristol City the last last week. Um, with the only change being a return of um, who came back? Oh, Sikoka came back, didn't she? Because she was banned, wasn't she? She came back. Um, former West Ham captain Ginny Flaherty was in the side as well for Liverpool. Um, just couldn't find a way back. And Liverpool, I think West Ham now in the... Where are we in the Women Premier, in the Super League? We are riding hot. We were riding high. I think we've gone back to fifth or sixth, I think, now. Let's have a quick look at the league standings as we speak. West Ham are sixth now. Yeah, sixth on 12 points um, after nine games. Obviously, the WSL is still going during the World Cup break, so to speak. So, 
go and check them out. Paul Koncheski, you've got Jimmy Walker as the assistant manager. You've got, um, you've got Kate Longhurst, friend of the channel. We've got Dagny, he's the captain. You know, two big West Ham fans there. Go and check, go and check them out there. It's, it's good fun. It's a great day out. It's a great day out. And that's it, my friends. As we do on a, you know, obviously... We present it with the headlines here very, very quickly. We've got the Hammers headlines later on this afternoon uh, with some transfer stories, a story about uh, Maxwell Corne as well in terms of potentially being, you know, could he be back for the fit for the Boxing Day game? Who knows? Who knows? But we'll uh, we'll give you the latest news on that. And as I say, keep an eye on the channel. We've got some really, really cool, uh, really different interviews coming up very, very soon with one of our newest friends of the channel. Um, So check that out. But until next time, um, take care. Stay safe. Stay warm. Stay humble. Stay positive. Keep the faith. It's coming home. Um, And we'd like to thank all our channel partners and all our channel members and all of our channel sponsors, all that type of thing. And uh, we'll thank our sponsors today. So take care. Bye. Bye for now. (laughs)